Today's crypto news, we're talking about a token and a dApp that I'm very, very excited for. It's out, you know what it is, but people probably don't have enough exposure. In addition to that, what is actually happening throughout September? I think it's going to be not a very good month, but we'll go over that now. Let's jump into the first thing, the thing I'm most excited for. So the thing I'm most excited for is Camino Finance. And the number of people that are probably fading this, I really don't want you to actually fade it. So I want anyone that's not using it to put more attention on it. I've done a thread on this. I'm going to talk you through a few things and why I think this has the potential in terms of the actual DAP to go from one and a half billion in TVL to over 10 billion. And also for the token price, which is beneath five cents, this is not financial advice, but this should be a pretty comfortable 10x or more. That's my opinion. So bookmark this thread. It will be linked below at the end. But what is community finance? It's a DeFi protocol. I think everyone knows that. One really cool thing is the fact that just in 22, when it was around, the TVL was tiny. In fact, even here last year, the TVL was absolutely tiny. And now it's got $1.4 billion worth of TVL. Meanwhile, others are not growing. Drift is growing a little bit and some of the EVMs are, but MarginFi and, and Solans save. They're not doing really, really well. Now, my honest take is the fact that the UI and UX is just so clean that even people that were airdrop farming it stuck around at the end to actually continue using the DAP. It was that clean. If you think, for example, that it's new on my radar or I don't have a lot of conviction or haven't done my research, you can just go to Sid Montgomery, ch check out on YouTube and then put in Camino in the search bar here and you will see the fact that I have mentioned Camino a hundred times and I've got a lot of good videos on it, which like this, where I just show you like how to use it. So very, very bullish on this. Why is this so important to the ecosystem? I want to talk about their flywheel approach in a second, but why is this actually important? The thing is that like, there are so many layer ones to choose from. There's so many layer ones and we all know that, you know, there's a lot of liquidity on EVMs, yet the Ethereum price isn't doing well. And ultimately at the end of the day, we're all here for our bags to go up. Ideally, I'd love it if, you know, Web3 actually manages to improve people's rights and quality of life and all that sort of stuff. And I think that will be the case. I think DAOs have an excellent use case, but it'll take some time to actually make them magical. But the reality is money goes where it's treated best. If you get, if it's safe returns, if it's a safe audited DAP with higher returns, then money will come there. And when money comes there, people start to play on other things. So imagine you have $50 million on EVMs and you can get more on Camino. You can bridge across, there's like no slippage, or you can just with, withdraw it via a sex a centralized exchange, and then you start to earn more. That person will then start to actually accumulate some soul, you know, use Jupiter, buy some NFTs, do all these things. So it actually enhances the actual entire base layer. That's how things become far more successful from their actual dApps. So my belief is more money on Solana, more builders, more DJs, more gains, more smiles. I do think that uh, they're going for a more of a, an approach similar to like Jupiter with the cat approach with certainty, alignment, and transparency coined by Meow. This has not been confirmed or anything. I'll ask the team if we can ever do a podcast, but that's what I'm seeing is more like that. If we come on down, we've got what's called, and this is all this has all been mentioned in their governance post, but they have what's called a flywheel and they've got four pillars. We're going to come on down to the bottom where the links are and just honestly read this. It's super, super worthwhile. I do want to take a little bit of time on this because this has an exceptional amount of conviction from me, crazy amount of research. And I think this is like the only DeFi dApp really to be using for the most part. So this is the governance post. It goes over the fact of they need to create a flywheel and there's going to be four major components. These components are very, very simple. So good products. The fact that you can go to Camino, you can do things that are like uh, DeFi related in terms of farming, then you can do borrow and lending, and then you can multiply and you can leverage and other things coming as well. Uh, the Camino token to align everything, revenue, you need revenue in order to pay the team and, you know, to pay for bills and that, that sort of stuff. And then you've got the community. So the community alignment. This is the thing that people haven't got in previous cycles. They've gone purely on just whales jumping in, speculating, things go up, and then that's it. And early, really early people, they did well and no one else did for the most part. Like Aave is a great tool. I love it. You have to be really early to actually get the Aave token. And that's, that was fine. They did nothing wrong. Tokenomics and distribution always changes each cycle. And they were earlier than this. Like it was a very different time when they're building. But what they have is they have what's called a flywheel. And a lot of people don't understand what a flywheel actually is. So you have a product, right? Community multiply, and you've got revenue. The revenue needs to be enough to comfortably pay the team and to be able to hire proper talent, like a good dev is not cheap. Then you've got the community token, and then you've got the community. 
the community token is used for governance. It's used as in it, like it's upside for the team. They obviously get unlocks. They can sell their token. They can do OTC deals or they can sell it on the market. There's no restrictions on that. They have unlocks, which we'll cover in a tokenomics video another day. Then we've got community. So community is, it's you and I, and it's the tens of thousands of people that use it. And if we have some upside to holding Camino, then this is what makes everything improve. It, it, it makes this thing work. So as I mentioned, I've got this video here. And first I want to just mention what is a flywheel. So if, typically a flywheel is, so it's a heavy revolving wheel in a machine. It's used to increase the machine's momentum. So if you have a look at this kind of picture, this picture here, you can see when this is being pushed around, there's a certain stage where it just kind of rotates around the next stage. And you get this momentum, you're using NG in a mechanical sense that actually allows it to go to conserve NG and to push. And as you go faster and faster, it pushes faster and faster. So they're essentially a flywheel is something which makes things go longer and longer and longer. And they grow and grow and they continue to grow like a ball of snow that goes down and it just goes bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, flywheels, they're thrown around. They're thrown around uh, in a way which they, they're disrespectful. Now, people use them as a little bit of a buzzword, more of a buzzword last cycle, but still a bit of a buzzword. And they, they fail. Like this is Celsius. Celsius is a failure. CEO did very, very bad things. It lost a lot of people a lot of money. Don't want to say like what he's guilty of in case I've got it wrong. But they created the Celsius flywheel. And what they did is they created it so that their token, if you got paid out in their token, you would get more tokens. And then you would want to continue to use this. You would buy more sell. The customers would earn yield and they would buy sell off the market in order to pay it back to people or give it to people as yield which would then increase things. In the end, this Celsius token did absolutely wonderfully and then absolutely terrible. But that's nothing related to the actual Celsius token. It's the fact that they lended out their crypto, your crypto, to people that didn't have collateral and they couldn't pay it back in the previous cycle crash. How is this actually going to work? Let's just go straight with this idea. So you've got your products and there'll be more products added. As more and more people use those, they will generate more revenue. That revenue, as I said, it'll get people more dedicated team. The other thing is, if you take all the revenue, like pump.fund does, and they don't give anything back, they are easy to vampire attack. If you get too greedy, and if you don't make your community eat well, then you will fail. Ultimately, you'll fail. Pump.fund is still the number one thing on Solana, but it will be eaten by someone that takes some of that revenue and actually promotes it back. And maybe pumped up fund then pivots. So you take some of that revenue, and this is linked to Camino. Exactly how? I don't know. Like you could do buybacks and burns if you wanted to. You could buy some token and whatnot. But either way, you know that your your revenue and your Camino is strongly linked. What you could do, let's say you had $50 million worth of revenue and it cost $20 million to keep the team running. This is in a year. And then you could take like $10 million for like reserves or whatever. And then 20 million could just be used to give people Camino tokens that you buy from the floor, so from the market, or you could just give people a, a more juicy yield, which gives them more Camino tokens. The Camino tokens that you get from using the point system, this is relevant because with community, uh, you can create like a working group like you can with Jupiter, and then you can start to promote Camino because essentially the only way this works is if there's 2 billion, 2 million or so people actually using Camino, which is a lot of people in order to get to 10, 10 billion. Could be less, could be more. That's just a, a rough guess that I've got. But ultimately, everything works with each thing. And as soon as you take out one thing, like if you don't respect your community, then you are expecting failure. And so they're working on this flywheel, and I'm excited for this. Now, I've been talking too long on this. Let's jump onto some other stuff. Either way, check it out. It's not to be faded. JLP Multiply is cooking. So if you want to check out this, it's earning out lower APR just because of the fact that it's actually... JLP is not getting a lot of attention right now. You can do it here. Uh, and as soon as leverage, more leverage comes into the system, you'll see this pump up. So I think this is a good time to accumulate some JLP, not financial advice. Got a video on it. It's on the Jupiter's exchange. Now, the extra tokens of the, our layer ones are the things we look at. Things are, things are down. Things are kind of bad, to be perfectly honest. September is not going to be very lucrative. Bitcoin and ETH has just bounced up slightly and Solana has just bounced up. But overall, look, we're down almost... Uh, it's 18% and 8% for these big ones. And there are unfortunately some even bigger failures throughout the week, like Flocky has not done well, obviously, after the cat airdrop. All this, I think, is it's momentary because greed right now, the fear and greed is very, very high. Of course, this flicks fast as anything. And typically, buying when things are fearful, the things that you like, is a positive play. Now, the actual returns that you normally get, this is a, a good thing from Coinglass to show what we look what we look like in terms of quarters each year or 
maybe even months down here as well. So this is just Ethereum and, and Bitcoin. So quarter three, in right in this lucrative cycle, this went up. Uh, however, quarter four tends to be more green and quarter three tends to not do so well. You can see that here. So if you're wondering why, like if it's all over, it's not. It's pretty much running the way it does. And September does tend to be a very down October, tends to be quite good. And remember, quarter four is generally stronger. So just keep that in mind. There are some key dates to watch in September and the 18th of September in particular. And this is relating to the fact that they were going to work out what are they going to cut the interest rate? Are they going to put it up or whatnot? I'm going to have a strategy that I'm going to talk about and show on like this. I'll release it. This is during breakpoint time. So I'll release it before then on how we could potentially do well with this. Mean coins are tanking uh, since they're, they're high earlier this year, but some of these are going to absolutely melt faces. So, you know, this could be a time when you want to start dollar cost averaging into some mean coins. A whale has accumulated a significant amount of whiff and I need to get some more research from my researcher, but he sees a particular pattern with whiff at these lows. It bounces harder than bonk. So you could potentially buy a little bit of whiff, set it at a level to take profits, and then just rinse and repeat. Either way, there's a small, there's some accumulation here. Who knows what else is happening up there? In particular though, Sol, we will often talk about putting in some stink bids in case we get these wicks down here and they get filled, which doesn't happen very often. But if it does happen, then you'll, you're absolutely fortunate. And a stink bid is like something that's unlikely to happen, like 190, 110. But if it, if it does happen, you're like, great, I got that, dis you know, I got that discounted and it typically will bounce up quickly. The actual real kind of level of support and uh, where it bounces off is around this at 130. It doesn't really, it, like you can see since April, we haven't gone lower, but you can also see the zones where things have been trading. So, you know, this has been considerably down, bam, bam, bam. And just even buying it at this point, selling it here, waiting for it to come down to this and then selling it not at this not at this level but a little bit before that could be that could be a strategy that you want to use you're just going within a range and the range has been proven true for quite some time remember if you want to use dca the best tool is jupiter dca and you can also do limit orders here as well you just go and take a hundred dollars buy some soul and just flick in the level you want 110 or whatever now let's have a look at the Solana calendar everyone should have this bookmarked reminder stake your soul with validator.com i am the general manager of validator.com I have a vested interest in doing well, in it doing well, but also we are a trusted validator. So check that out. And then Solana calendar, let's go have a look at the second. We've got a few things here, nothing too much, but more and more stuff is coming on and coming on. So this is going to get busier and busier. Please make sure that it's bookmarks. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on things. You're going to miss out on airdrops. You're going to miss out on claiming things. I don't want that to happen. The JLP pool is currently earning just 27%. So whenever this, go, this is AP, APR, APR it's 24%, so annual percentage rate, and then yield compounded is 27. So it's a little bit lower. This is as low as I've seen it happen quite some time. So the markets are probably not going to have a whole lot of crazy volatility. People are not sure if we're if they're longing or shorting in general. Moonwalk Fitness, you need to get your steps in if you can. 10,000 steps, if you can do this, you can compete for $1,000 in additional ACS prizes with access protocol check it out use the link below in this tweet and magic eden here they've got a hundred thousand dollar prize pool it's not my wallet of choice uh magic eden i've spoken about them many times uh they're fine with me i i, I like magic Eden. i like the people there they didn't they didn't do the best things in like a, a year or a couple of years ago with removing royalties they had to do what was best for their company and in some ways they really really hurt the ecosystem but they're trying to do like that was in the past they're trying to push everything further and further and as we're not just concerned with Solana, we are concerned with multiple blockchains. This is a good chance for you to get onto base and check this out. I need to look into what this $100,000 base, this prize pool is. Echelon here, this relates to like a card game called Parallel. And I mentioned this in my Golfin video, if you want to check that out. $100,000 prize pool. Need to work out more information on that, but you can click on the link. You need to use specifically Magic Eden's wallet. Remember, Soulflare, I'm a Soulflare maxi, happy to do so. But for this, you can check this out to see if you win. You're looking at around five cents in ETH gas fees, apparently. NX Finance, the final three hours is here. This is this has been done. So this actually was a lots of success. And I mentioned it like in for the last few days, except for Sunday, which was a day off. And the final three hours is here. And you had to see if you were whitelisted. And they raised 4,300 soul, which is like half a million dollars or thereabouts. And then they're going to have a public round here. I know I would have mentioned this in different tweets, but it'd be good to see how many tokens you're getting for this. And, and we can't see that clearly in this UI. So that doesn't make perfect sense. But still, congratulations. It's kind of hard to get money in this 
in this environment, to be honest. And they've done well. It's only half a million, but that's still really good work. I wasn't expecting it to go in two minutes. And no, I did not jump in. Drip has some news. There's a new update. So you can check your rank. Uh, this is a monthly progression. And you gather XP by securing collectibles and winning auctions. The rarer the collectible, the more you get. Uh, you just come here. You log in. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, just follow the, follow the things. We can do a tutorial on need if it's needed. With Drip to a house, people, we don't know if there's going to be an airdrop. Like, I think there would be in the future. Either way, what they need to do is they need to actually become this hub for like creators and then have value and then have revenue. And then they probably need to do a flywheel approach like Camino, like Jupiter, have that kind of aspect where the community is invested. In the meantime, I like it. It's supporting artists. It's very, very valuable. Give this a go if you like if you like art. art. Crypto Class, I'm the founder of Crypto Class, and we are putting out more and more content over there, just starting with some threads first. So Sony's Scenarium, the big dogs from PlayStation, check this out. Make sure you've actually done this. You just need a bridge. Very, very simple. You can go and get some uh, like test ETH from one wallet and then bridge it over to another. You do need to have a GitHub account, which is not difficult to do. Make sure you do that. Reminder, who is going to Breakpoint? I hope I'll see some of you there. Buy tickets now to Solana Burning Man. $500 is, is, is a ticket price. And as I mentioned, you're probably looking around five grand when you factor in flights and everything like that. But very well worth actually getting there. So I hope to see some people here. And if you can't get there, I will be covering content on it. I've got this video, which talks about everything to do. And this relates to Singapore in general as a crypto kind of person. So if you're also going to token 2049, or if you're just only going to token 2049, then uh, you can, if you pay with USD, you can use my code as SebMonty10, get, get you 10% off. But this this is like $700 or so a ticket. I think early bird is going to end very soon. So if you are going, get it now before you're paying double the amount. And finally, are we in NFT season? No, I do, I do not think so. However, uh, Herman's in particular, I mentioned this at like 0 0.8 and they've, they've gone up. I haven't sold it. I don't plan on selling it, but I'm pleased to see that they are doing well. I want to find out exactly what they're actually what their mission is, and ideally do a podcast. So if anyone's keen on that, let me know below. Let's jump into the actionables now. Remember, actionables, DCA Soul and Jupe, and stake with validate.com. Ensure you won't be liquidated if Soul goes lower, like I'm refer referring to something like Camino, if you've got a loan out. Do moonwalk fitness challenges. Don't be get If you've got the time, make sure you do it. Like, Or if you're going to walk anyway, you may as well be doing that. Book your tickets to Breakpoint and Token 2049, and Mint Echelon exclusive on base network using Magic Eden mobile wallet. You can use Magic Eden wallet because you get more points, but you can also just use their, their desktop one as well. Now, airdrop actionables. Camino's due to Soul, Soul Media Pool. This gets met points. People, you want some exposure to, and this is the easy way to do it because DLMMs are hard. Remember to mint your Solano ID priority pass for exclusive solid perks and try and get yourself into business class or first class. And in general, just state 20 million bonk with bonkrewards.com. Use Zillow Finance as a that lottery system, give it a go. Don't expect that to have a crazy airdrop or anything like that. I'll just be completely honest, but it could be worthwhile. You could win uh, decently and follow the class links scenario airdrop guide. That's everything for today. Make sure you do the actionables and I'll catch you in the next video.